This meeting is being recorded. Oh, you did what I said. Uh, good, good evening, everybody. If you could put yourselves on mute, we'll start the uh, re, uh, the the presentation in a little bit. So please mute yourself, and uh, we'll get going here in a couple minutes. People are still coming in. Thank you. Okay, I think we're getting getting muted. Hold on. Lee and Brian, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, it's about 8.01. Let's give it another minute or two, and then we'll get started. Let pe more people are coming in. I wish Jerry was here, Brian. He could have helped. Yeah. Let's just give it another minute or two. People are still coming in. Yeah. Okay, well, I think uh, we can get started. Uh, we have some nice attendance. People are still coming in, but I'll let them. I'll let them join as they enter. So, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Arn Senadella, and uh, we're here tonight to discuss the um, Greenville portfolio, 281 units in Greenville, South Carolina. We're quite excited about this. Uh, this possible investment. And so let me introduce myself, Arn Sinadella. Uh, been living in Greenville since 2014. I got into the real estate business in Silicon Valley, uh, Menlo Park, California, way back in 1978. So I've been in the real estate business 44 years, moved to Greenville about eight years ago. And uh, within the last three or four years, transitioned my single family rental portfolio to a multifamily portfolio. And um, this will be the fourth multifamily asset we purchase uh, in Greenville. And I'd like to introduce, um, hold on, sorry. I'm not too facile at uh, Zoom. Uh, Let me unmute Brian. I'm, I'm not muted on. Okay, you're not muted. So nope. let me introduce uh, Brian Walsh and let me tell you a little bit about Brian and then he can talk for himself. Uh, met Brian about seven years ago when I was buying a duplex in, in Greenville, South Carolina. He was property manager for the owner. We developed a relationship and uh, 
maybe about four or five years ago, I turned over all my rental properties to Brian and his company, Progressive Properties of Greenville. And from there, I hounded him for two or three years to come join me in multifamily real estate. And I was finally successful. So as I've mentioned, we've partnered on three deals here in Greenville. And uh, Brian, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and take it from there. Sure, thanks, Arn. Um, so yeah, my name is Brian Walsh. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm uh, originally from Warwick, Rhode Island. Uh, I moved to Greenville about 15 years ago. Um, married, have two little girls. Um, about 13 years ago, we started a residential property management company here in Greenville. Uh, so we currently manage about 420 doors. Um, and it's a mix of single families and multifamily properties. Um, so besides the traditional uh, property management services, we also have a six person maintenance team where we facilitate all of the turnover repairs and the remodels in house. So that's a substantial part of our business. Um, in addition to that, you know, over the past 13 years, I've been a very active real estate investor in Greenville. So we've done dozens of retail flips as well as uh, turnkey rentals, which is essentially uh, flipping to landlords. Um, and uh, that's kind of a, a brief summary of that. And then like Arn mentioned a few years ago, um, Arn kind of reached out to me about getting into multifamily. And after a little while, I uh, decided to uh, give it a try and definitely quickly fallen in love with multifamily and uh, the economies of scale and all that comes along with that. And uh, so Arn and I, uh, we did three syndications to date and looking forward to uh, partnering up with Arn again, as well as Reed to uh, work on this, this next portfolio here, so. Well, th thanks, Brian. You, yeah, yeah, thanks, Brian. And uh, Brian does all the tough things, manages the assets, renovates the units, and takes care of all the difficult things. So uh, uh, happy to have him as a partner. And now I'd like to introduce Reed Goosens. And um, Reed is a nationally known, recognized syndication expert. Um, two, three years ago, I was listening to a podcast and I heard this cool young guy from Australia talking about multifamily real estate. And I reached out to him, invested with him in a deal in Austin, Texas. Uh, we developed a friendship and then I had the good luck, good fortune to join a small mentoring program that Reed and one of his partners was putting on. And I learned a phenomenal amount about the multifamily space. And he kind of held my hand, particularly on our first two or three syndication deals in, in Greenville, South Carolina. So um, he's had a big impact on, on my multifamily career. And just to let you know, Reed, Brian, and I have been looking for this type of asset in Greenville for about a year and a half. Uh, we've actually offered on a property across the street. We offered on two properties next door. So this is particularly a location that we've had focus on and we're excited that we finally landed this deal and we're very happy to partner with Reed. So Reed, take it over, tell the folks a little bit about yourself and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, thank you, Arn. And I think experts are a bit of a stretch, my friend. But I'm um, just <laughs> just a, just a, just a normal guy who's trying to trying to build something awesome. So, yeah, for those of you who don't know who I who I am, my name is Reed Goosens. Um, a little bit of a quick thirty second pitch. Originally from Australia, I moved here about a decade ago. Um, my background's in structural engineering and ground up development. Uh, I've been in the syndication space for about seven eight years now um, through various different companies. I've Built a handsome portfolio, about $685 million worth of assets under management um, across five different MSAs here in the US. Um, I, I, I don't say that to boast. I really do say that to encourage others to, to, to get off the, the fence and, and, and inspire people to, to go out and take action. I, As I said, when I moved here 10 years ago, I, I really had no desire to 
you know, didn't realize I'd be in this, in this business all these years later. I really just came to chase a girl and she turned out to be my wife. So uh, here we are 10 years later and having an awesome ride doing it. Um, you know, in, in, in saying that, you know, Arne has been also very um, influential in, in, in bringing me to Greenville. Uh, we have worked together tirelessly over the last 24, 18 to 24 months looking for deals in this area. Um, he mentioned a, a mentorship group of mine. I sort of started that as a bit of a, a you know, a scra I scratched their people's, other people's backs, my, my students, they scratch mine. And, and, and Arne has definitely done that in terms of just opening my eyes to what an incredible market this is. And we'll get into um, the, you know, the, obviously the nuts and bolts of the Greenville market, if you're not familiar with it, but, you know, Arne has always been uh, a guy that has, has talked highly of the Greenville market. And we have been chasing deals, you know, bigger deals like this size for, for some time now. And um, it's taken a lot to, you know, a lot of hard work, a lot of discipline to, to underwrite uh, through, you know, my team has been you know, doing a lot of the underwriting, but Arne and his team on the ground and Brian have been a lot of, you know, doing a lot of the, the, the property tours, um, but but it, it takes a long period of time to to sort of be known with the brokers, getting you know hanging around the hoop as they say to get that that rebound. Um, so really really happy to be partnering with 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 Arne and Brian on this deal, and um, you know looking forward to giving this deal uh, into the portfolio here in the the coming months. Yeah, thanks thanks Reed, thanks so much, and a uh, little mutual love and respect between all three of us and. Uh, uh, I need to mention one other team member who will be an important person in this uh, investment. Uh, Brian in Progressive Properties has managed the smaller assets we've purchased in Greenville, and he's done a fabulous job on one of the assets that we purchased in March 2021, 14 months ago. He's already been able to increase the rent roll 28%. We know rents have increased, but normally you hear numbers like 14 and 15%. And Brian's team has been able to increase rent 28% in a little bit over a year. And we've also been able to do it in a way that's respectful and appreciative of our existing residents. Uh, we've had very few people leave and... Um, so in any case, Brian's done a great job. Uh, this is a larger asset. And once you get over about 100 units, you can then go to on-site property management. Uh, and Brian's company is not set up for that. So we have partnered with Eastland Property Management, also of Greenville, uh, the the president of the company, the owner of the company is a guy named Mike Holmes. Uh, he lives in Greenville. They're headquartered in Greenville. Um, Mike, back in the day, actually lived at the Bonita property. And uh, over the last year, year and a half, as we've toured these properties, we've relied on Mike and his team to give us their take on the market, the property. And most of the times he said, would say, you know, I managed that property five years ago, or I know the guy who owned it five years ago. So property management under this, uh, in, in this portfolio will be done by Eastland Property Management. Uh, Brian will interface closely with him to help get the renovations done and so forth. The upshot of it all is I think we've put together a really good team for this deal experienced, successful, local, with the exception of Reed, but Reed's a talented syndicating operator. And so I think the entire team is going to do a really good job with this asset. So the other thing I'd like to say is thank you for everyone who's come to listen tonight. We'll try to do this in an hour. Uh, I've allocated an hour 15 on the recording, so we'll see if we can make it. Um, we have a lot of repeat investors back, and we thank you for your time and attendance. In addition, we have a lot of new potential investors, and we thank you for taking the time and giving us the opportunity to prevent the, uh, present this opportunity to, to you and introduce ourselves. So thank you for attending. I'll get into the um, presentation now. 
and we'll try to leave time at the end for uh, Q and A. If you have questions, maybe the chat box or the Q and A box, and I'll try to keep up with it as best I can. Um, so let me get into the presentation and. Uh, can everybody see the offering summary to the to the side? Yes, we can. Okay, so uh, we're paying uh, about thirty five five for the asset. Price per unit is one hundred and twenty six, give or take a little bit, which is actually below the average price per unit in Greenville. We're estimating we're going to hold this asset for approximately three to five years. And we need to raise $16 million in equity to complete the transaction. Uh, we're purchasing the property at a 4% cap rate, entry cap of four. And we've projected an exit cap of 5%, uh, which is a very conservative model. Most indicating operators add about a tenth of a percent for every year of hold. In this case, we're actually adding two tenths and projecting returns based on a 5% ex exit cap. Uh, Class C shares should get about a 2.0 equity multiple, investor IRR of about 16 with an average cash on cash of 6.8%. Uh, so those are kind of the highlights of the summary. And now I'd like to turn to the Greenville market. And uh, I always bore people while I rave about the Greenville market. So let me rant for a little bit and then we'll move on to the rest. So uh, Greenville has recently been, been rated as the number one emerging multifamily market in the United States by Multifamily Housing News. And I just will kind of point out average price per unit, 144,932. We're purchasing at about 126,5. And I'll kind of go through these slides quickly. You have access to the deck. You can always review the specifics. And if you ever have any questions, we can certainly set up a one on one call. Uh, this slide kind of shows where we're at in the multifamily cycle in Greenville, South Carolina. And you'll note we're early in the expansion phase. So we've got a lot of good runway to uh, many years of future growth. And I would just note we're listed along with cities like Phoenix, Arizona, and Miami, Florida, that most multifamily investors understand are extremely hot markets. So to kind of be grouped in that same niche uh, speaks well of Greenville, South Carolina. I've got to admit somebody else. And then here's a rent map, rent growth map of Greenville. It's probably average 14 to 15% per year. Uh, so rents are growing and we expect that to continue. And then one of the things we loved about Greenville when we moved here is we kind of felt there was a really kind of can do vibe, an optimistic vibe. We had a sense of growth and vitality. And so for the next couple of slides, I'll simply go through some of the major projects in Greenville that have been recently completed or are underway. Uh, and I'll start with Unity Park, 60 acres, $60 million project in total, recently opened. They're still completing it, but a uh, fabulous facility just right outside downtown. Then the county government is redoing their entire site into new office space for the county, but also retail and office space for private enterprise, including uh, a movie theater, that's a $1 billion development just outside of uh, downtown Greenville. Out in the San Susi area, a couple miles from downtown, another billion dollar development going in. And again, these are not just proposed, 
these are projects that are actually ongoing and nearing completion. Uh, Grand Bohemian Hotel, which is kind of an upscale boutique hotel, is just about finished. It overlooks the waterfall and Falls Park. And then there's a new master development plan for the Lawrence Road area, maybe five or 10 minutes from downtown. So lots of growth and development in Greenville, lots of investment, uh, a recent publication ranked Greenville one of the best cities for renters in 2022. So you can review that at your leisure. Um, population, uh, let me speak a little bit about the location of this property. So uh, these two assets are out on the east side of Greenville near the intersection of East North and Pelham Road. And you can see median housing income of, or median housing price of 426, average household income of about 87,000. So this is kind of a solid middle income neighborhood that can support increased rents as per the business plan. So it, it, it's a really solid neighborhood, five to 10 minutes from downtown, five to 10 minutes from BMW, Michelin, and uh, Greenville Spartanburg International Airport. So a really solid location. Uh, more data about why people think Greenville is a great market to invest in. And then um, Brian kind of headed the due diligence. So I'd like to turn it over to him and he can kind of talk about the property and the results of the due diligence and uh, how he went about the process of evaluating the physical asset. Yeah, thanks, Arn. Um, so, yep, as Arn mentioned, uh, we 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 um we did our due diligence. We actually uh, did the vast majority of it last week. We we literally had a small army. I think we had about twenty five to thirty people there for a couple of days. Um, Reed and some of his team flew in, of course, for the due diligence. Um, and you know, very typical of what we want to do. We had our, our a roofer out there. We had an electrician, plumber. We cameraed all the sewer lines. <clears throat> we literally walked into every single solitary unit in both buildings. Um, we did a lease audit. Um, inspected the interiors, the exteriors, the property itself. Um, we actually had an engineer out there on Tuesday, um, just literally just crawling all over the property, both of them inside, outside. And, and, you know, essentially what we're doing is just looking for, you know, any potentially uh, potential problems that we didn't account for in our underwriting. So obviously, you know, we, we found plenty of things to, to fix and to work on, and that's exactly you know, uh, what we underwrote for too. So we have a very large CapEx budget. Um, so the good news is we didn't find anything that that shocked us. We found kind of what we thought we were going to find, um, which which is, uh, you know, pretty standard, right? Um, and then as far as, do you, do you want me to get into the um, the business plan as far as like the, the remodels and everything right now, or just kind of? Well, maybe we can cover that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and then maybe some general comments about the rental market in Greenville. You were telling me about uh, sure. the experience at yeah. Progressive Properties, and then perhaps talking about some of the other assets that we own in the area, like the 3505 East North, that's yeah. about a mile from this project. So give us some kind of firsthand experience about what's actually happening in the rental market in Greenville and, and what your sense of it is. Sure. So um, I, I, I can give you a great example. So as I said earlier, we currently manage 420 units in Greenville. And uh, when the webinar is over, if you go to our website, you'll notice we have one listing. So we have one vacancy out of 420 units. I mean, we literally just can't keep up with demand right now. Um, it's, it's pretty unbelievable. And we manage, I mean, within a half a mile of this property, we manage easily 50 units, maybe 75 within a half a mile. Um, our office is about five minutes away from this property. Um, as Arn mentioned, uh, earlier this year, we, we bought a 12 unit 
complex on East North Street. It's maybe a quarter of a mile away from this. Just last month, we had a couple of tenants move out. Um, we did very, very light remodels. They're two bedroom, one and a half bath. And we rented them very, very quickly for $13.75 a month. So it's $12.75 base rent plus some utility bill back. Um, and what were phenomenal. they rented for before, Brian? $9.75. Okay. So they went yeah. from $9.75 to, to $12.75 base rent, $13.75 with utility bill back in it. So really, really promising. Um, in addition, I think we have a, a good number of uh, investors from the, uh, the townhomes at Rutherford on the webinar tonight. And we've seen similar success over there. Uh, we've owned that now for, I think, seven months. And when we took over, rent rates were all over the place over there, but roughly they were in the $900 range. Um, again, we're going in there, we're doing, you know, we're doing actually pretty extensive remodels over there because they needed it. And we've been renting them at uh, a base rent of $1,200 a month for a two bedroom, one bath. And the remodels that we're doing over there are very extensive but they're not, uh, they're not the level that we're gonna do over here at the Benito and uh, Calabria. These are gonna be uh, probably what, you know, I think, I think uh, you know, Reed's gonna speak to this uh, a little bit later, but like a platinum level rehab with granite stainless steel, as opposed to over there down the road at the towns where we're doing four mica and, you know, white appliances. Um, so uh, I feel extremely, um, confident in our rent projections. Um, I, I, I just, there's, we, we see every single day that it's, that it's achievable here in Greenville. And I don't think there's going to be any problem, you know, getting the rent rates that we're projecting in the future, like very, very easily. So that's very well, promising. Yeah. Well, thanks, Brian. And the, 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 the point being is uh, Brian and I own individual rental properties in Greenville we, we own and operate as general partners, uh, three multifamily properties. So we really have a good, you know, a good handle on what the demand is, what the market rent is in Greenville. Brian's office, I think, is about a mile and a half from this property. I live about three miles from the property. So it's a market that we intimately know uh, and I think most of you have heard the expression, real estate is local, 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 or real estate's location, location, location. So we really have a good handle on what's going on in Greenville. Um, and we don't expect anything to shift. Median county income is now up at 85,000, which then indicates there can be significant rent increases while still keeping the rents affordable uh, at these properties in downtown Greenville, a few miles away, two bedroom units might rent for 22, 2300. We're projecting 1350, 1450 in three or four years. And in fact, we're already getting 1350 at some of the properties. So uh, we know the market, we're confident about the rental projections. So thanks, Brian. Let me move into kind of returns and uh, we have a little bit different deal structure uh, compared to the other deals that Spark and Progressive Properties have done. Uh, since this is a larger deal, we're able to offer kind of three different shares that people can invest in. And so we have a class A share. Uh, the slide is wrong. The minimum investment is not 100,000. It's more 50,000 and people will be able to split their investments between classes. Uh, the class A share is for people who want kind of immediate, consistent, steady cash flow. Basically, the return will be 7% a year. And on upon sale, you'll be caught up with an extra 4% return. So a total return of 11%. Uh, you're highest in the capital stack right before the long-term debt on the property. Uh, so the class A shares are great for people who want cash flow, a predictable return, and also 
uh, the security of being just behind the debt and get paid before the other shares go. And so we'd encourage people to consider the class A shares, which is something that we haven't been able to offer before. And the other thing is, is people can buy some class B shares as well as class A and kind of mix it up. Um, the class B shares, whoops, sorry. Uh, class B shares uh, are your more typical 7% PREF with a 70-30 split. And as you'll see on the slide, the cash flow grows over time and will ultimately average out to 6.8%, as opposed to the Class A shares that will pay 7% right out of the gate consistently with a 4% catch up at the end. So review those. If you have any questions about the shares, reach out to Brian and I or Reed, and we're happy to walk you through it. But we are able to offer investors kind of a mix and match uh, options that due to the deal size on our previous deals, we weren't able to offer. So take a look at that. And if you have questions, just uh, please let us know. So now, um, I'd like to turn the, the next part of the presentation over to Reed. Uh, and Reed, please speak to your, your supply chain processes, your construction management processes, how you've managed these large scale value add renovations and properties in the past. So please go through kind of the CapEx budget and then Reed was kind of the lead underwriter on this deal. And Reed, if you can discuss the underwriting and make any comments that you feel are appropriate on that, um, that would be great. Yeah, sure thing. So um, for those people who you know are, are, are trying to understand why we've been looking at, at these two-pack portfolios, let me just um, remind people. So I, in my in my current portfolio, I've done these types of acquisitions where we've gone and you know, buy one, two right across the street from one another or, or down the road from one another. I've done this about four, four times in the past um, in the portfolio. We've got about 17 uh, assets. Um, I've done it in San Antonio. I've done it in Phoenix. I just closed one in Phoenix. Uh, I'm doing, we're obviously doing it here in, in Greenville. And the reason we, we do it is, is, is a number, number of reasons. One, you get instant scale in a, in a market, which is really awesome. But two, from a value add point of view, it, it, it really bodes well when you can try and combine an asset and make them feel like one, right? So we can get, uh, you know, a lot of economies of scale in terms of staffing, in terms of general contractors and mobilization costs. Um, there's just a, a lot of benefits in terms of, you know, insurance. Uh, we get to, you know, get a bigger loan, um, but we can, you know, have the flexibility of, of, of selling one or keeping the other or refining. So buying in a two-pack, is it's, I'm very I'm very it's very uh, common to me. I, I like doing it, um, and, and there's just so many uh, incredible benefits uh, from doing it at once. So with this capital expenditure plan, we do plan to to combine the two assets, make it feel like an east and a west or a north and a south, and we will immediately go in there and and rebrand the assets. Um, I think the names are extremely tired, <laughs> and if you look at the online reviews, um, you know it, it needs better management. So coming in with Eastland, who we've you know, had a good relationship with over the last 12 to 18 months, we, 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 and given the fact that, you know, Mike used to live here, you know, we're extremely confident on just the low hanging fruit. Uh, as Brian mentioned earlier, we've spent, you know, 22 people were on site the other week. Uh, last week, I was there as well doing some filming. Um, There's some, there some awesome videos floating around of the asset. Uh, please check those out when you can. Um, but we just noticed that just is, that the current owner hasn't done a lot of value add he's they've sort of they're a group out of new york city um these deals actually came to us as a five pack uh we we originally bid on three out of the five uh but ultimately we didn't get that third deal uh which was all it's just actually up the road from these two right now uh so getting two out of the five was really awesome they have not done any real value adds There's over 90 percent of the interior units are in classic condition uh we're going to come in through and do what we'd like to call a platinum level upgrade uh, and and you know, the, the current owner really just sort of focused on maintaining, you know, relatively good deferred maintenance. Yeah, you know, there's, there's not a lot of major issues we found here. Uh, we but but in saying that, we will definitely come along and finish out any of the exterior stuff that we that, that needs to be finished out. You know, for example, uh, the Calabria, 
it's currently painted a mustard yellow. Well, the Benito is a white is a white color, so we're going to want to, we want to combine uh, the, the color scheme to make it look and feel like one. We're obviously going to rebrand them, as I mentioned earlier, do up the leasing centers, um, operate them as one asset, make sure the gym and the amenities are, are updated. We're going to come in and, and put in a people park uh, with, with a playground and you know a pickleball court and, and, and pet yards and and, and and a dog park. All these things people want. You know, our, our thesis is that. We want people to cross the property line, approach the leasing center, and already subconsciously be say to themselves, "I want to live here because it's it's clean, it's affordable, um, and it's safe." Right. So, you know, we, we're obviously going to come in with with um, some some good designers and do up the leasing centers. We do think design is is is, is actually kind of cheap <laughs> to make something look nice. Doesn't take a lot of time or effort. It just takes some thought. Uh, and so, part of that is in captured in this in this capital expenditure budget. We do plan to spend over $5 million on this deal in the next um, 24 to 36 months. It's going to be a big, heavy lift. And, and back to the, the, the sort of the, the, how we've insulated ourselves in terms of risks on this deal, I do want to add that, you know, Brian and Arne touched on the, 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 the renovated rents, but we've also, given that I did underwrite this deal, um, we, we looked closely at what the, not only what the market needs in terms of renovations, in terms of product, but we also looked at where we're trying to push this asset to when we compare to uh, other similar vintage assets in the market. And then we looked at the, the, the overall rental demographic. Again, if you look at the rental demographic in this area, the average household income is over $80,000. If you use the rule of three, meaning a third of your income goes to rent, then the, you know, that rule would mean that you could spend over $2,000 uh, on rent in this area, right? We don't, we're, not, we're nowhere near $2,000. Our pro forma rents are somewhere between $1,200 to $1,300, and that's in two years' time. So we really do think that we are you know, keeping very conservative with our underwriting, making sure we're not pushing the rents, but also making sure that we're, we're producing a product that is, um, you know, again, clean, safe, and affordable. And you, know, you might think $5 million is a lot of money. It is a lot of money. But I know that you know coming into these assets, we're, we're going to be addressing all. You know, we've got plenty of money in this budget to to address any of the, the all the beautification, I should say, and then also any of the gotchas. Um, given these assets were built in the mid seventies, but we don't believe that to be the case, given that we've you know spent a lot of time with Brian's team uh, last week in Eastland. So in general, we're, we're insulating ourselves in terms of uh, making sure we're not projecting too high rents. We're coming in and dealing with and have an extremely healthy renovation budget, um, making sure that we want we were attracting a, 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 a better type of renter. We definitely want to turn that rent roll and, and, and increase the, the, the change the demographic on site. But we're also buying two assets, which means we have flexibility upon exit to you know sell one, keep the other, refi. Uh, and just you know, op opens up the most flexibility. Uh, I do also want to add on the class A, class B, class C. You know, that is I, I offer that on on, on all my deals uh, of this size. Um, and and it is op the reason we offer that is to op offer optionality. Again, investors can choose where they want to sit. If you're investing in class A, the cash flow deal, you are um, you're you're sitting right behind the the the, the debt, right, uh, which is very low leverage, and we can talk about that here in a little bit. Um, or if you want to invest for you know for long-term capital appreciation, you can invest in class B or class C. So again, optionality is really the name of the game here. And I think it adds uh, to, to, to quite an awesome uh, an ability for you guys as investors to choose where you want to place your capital. And again, you can place it in either class A or class B. So for all those reasons and more, that's why you know I love this deal. We, we, we remain conservative in our underwriting and our assumptions of where we're going to push. We've got plenty of CapEx budgets uh, on, on hand. And you know we're offering uh, a bit of a smorgasbord in terms of rent um, investment options. So, Arn, with that being said, I think we can um, take it back through to you to, to bring us home, and then we'll answer some questions. Uh, sure. So, Reed, Re, do you want to kind of cover how you source materials? And, yes. Sorry, and, and kind of yeah. save money <laughs> that way because I think that's a key part of the puzzle. Yes, that is a key part of the puzzle, and I, and I completely forgot to to, e to even <laughs> talk about that, but. But, um, but, but so my background's in, in structural engineering and ground up development. Uh, I moved to this country 10 years ago, um, as I mentioned earlier, to be a structural engineer. And, and, and in that time, I've spent you know, a, a lot of my prior corporate gig in the world, the institutional world of building stuff. Uh, so we so I uh, have built out a, a bit of a supply chain um, um, mousetrap. And I've done that since really the first ever deal I bought back in 2016 in San Antonio. 
Uh, it's not rocket science. What we do is we go, we, we product directly from, from Asia. Uh, we have, again, sort, sorted out the entire supply chain from start to finish. We have warehouses in Dallas um, that you know stock out all our supplies. And then we get to distribute that across, across the country. I've got deals in Central Texas, Phoenix, and obviously now here in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, and so when I say materials, what do you, you might be asking, what, what, do I, what do I mean? It's really everything we touch with terms of the unit. So cabinets, granite, flooring, lighting, um, plumbing fixtures, um, door handles, anything that we do on the inside of the units, which we have at scale, and we're going to do it repetitively across the assets, we will go and buy shipping containers full of that sort of stuff. Um, again, it reduces risk in the deal. It reduces the overall cost, but it also takes off uh, another third element that we don't have to negotiate with the, the GC on site for material costs or material upcharges because we, we control that, that side of the pie. Uh, so all, all we're really you know, negotiating with him is uh, is their labor costs. So in general, I built that mousetrap out over as the last five to six years. Um, we have seen it work extremely suc well, successfully over over a lot of deals. Um, and it's you know it, it's it's a thing that I'm I'm really proud of. And uh, as a, as the lead syndicator, I think it's also give, gives me a little bit gives us I should say uh, a bit of. Uh, you know, a point of um, notoriety compared to other operators in the space. Um, so yeah, with that being said, we can definitely hand it back over. I can answer any more questions afterwards about it if if, if people have any questions. Uh, so read one more. I'd like to move it to kind of the underwriting slides, and if you have any comments about those, sure. uh, please please go. Yeah, ahead. did you did you add in any of the sensitivity analysis in on these? I things? did not put any of the sensitivity analysis in, but we can certainly provide that to folks if they're interested. Yeah, and that's I think the the biggest thing that we as as the operators need to look at, right? We don't have crystal a crystal ball of what's going to happen. We we have a performer here. This is what we think is going to happen. But we also need to look at as operators. Well, what's the upside and what's the downside? And uh, I know Arn has uh, in in his longer deck uh, uh, some sensitivity analysis, uh, and it shows investors, you guys, what you know, what could happen um, given you know changings of exit cap rates, or if we don't. Uh, we had high uh, high high vacancy and and the rent growth isn't isn't as um, uh, isn't what we predicted. Uh, we, we've got a bunch of different um, and uh, slides that 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 you know will be provided to you after the call um, that you can look at. And again, the the reason we provide that is because we want you guys to make the most educated decision. But also, we we you know no one has a crystal ball. No one's no one knows what's going to happen in in five years time. That's why those sensitivity analysis shows you the upside and the downside. And when you when you examine those. We are, you know, our first and foremost thing we'd want to do is protect your investors' money, right? And and so we make sure that all our um, all our assumptions are robust and are, are, are you know a fact not a fact check but a, a checked against the sensitivity analysis. So um, I think it, it would it would be really really interesting for for people to, to to take a look at that. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, in terms of other things that we've done. Um, you know, uh, we'll talk about the the, the, the rental growth. So in, in, besides just the pops in rent that we're going to get to, to bring them the, the rents up from, from where they currently are to market, we then have it to apply a, a year on year rent growth. And we've assumed uh, conservatively roughly uh, a 3% rent growth over the next five years. Um, you know, if we compare to other stats, uh, you know, CoStar and other big asymmetric um, data centers out there about rental the rental market here in Greenville, they're still projecting over the next uh, four to five years over 20% rent growth, um, which is upwards of 5% per year. We definitely don't are not relying on that. We're relying on buying something that has low in-place rents today and pushing that and then growing it at a conservative rate. Um, the other thing, you know, is occupancy. Um, this market is, is is well above a 95, 96% occupancy today. Uh, we we are, for example, in year one, are dropping that down to 92%. And then in year two, we drop, we bring up to 93% and then stabilizing at 95 for the remainder of the hold. Um, in terms of our capital expenditure, um, so not, not capital expenditure, in terms of our expense growth, we have maintained the trailing 12 months, even though that if you look at you know the repairs and, uh, and maintenance and turn costs, we're, we're growing the in-place expenses that, that, that the current owner has used, but we're also spending over $5 million. So we will see some um, re reduction in those line items, um, you know, repairs, maintenance, turn costs, and contract services. Uh, and, and again, we didn't underwrite that because we wanted to remain conservative, you know, because we know that for every 
um, five units that comes up for, 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 for turn or people move out every five units, some of them will go to renovations and some of them will just go back in the leasing pool. So again, um, remaining conservative on our expenses and not trying to cut slash expenses left, right and centre to make the numbers work. Um, but in general, you know, we're, 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 we're adding capital expenditure costs, we're you know, making sure our insurance is all in alignment um, and, and really just really excited to be you know, welcoming these two assets to the portfolio here in the coming months. So with that being said, um, <laughs> I, uh, I'll let I, you I, take I, a break, Reed. Thanks <laughs> so much, man. It's great information and, uh, you know, uh, happy we finally found one and get the opportunity to work with you and provide some great returns for our investors. Uh, people know I'm over the top bullish on Greenville. And so there's a lot of reasons to be excited about this. So thank you. And uh, let me move to the next slide or two, and then we'll move into uh, Q&A and we can wrap it up for the evening. So thanks. Okay, so um, interest rates are on everybody's mind. Interest rates are going up. What's going to happen? And um, happy to report, we have signed a term sheet for 5% fixed rate debt, uh, 30 months of interest only, no prepayment penalty. So we can sell, refi, adjust to market conditions. So we are getting a fixed rate debt that will carry us through the life of the hold. Uh, so we're very excited about that. We were able to lock the rate before the latest um, Fed meeting. And I think most people know they raised them another three quarters of a basis point. The other thing here is we're working with a local bank that knows Greenville, likes the market, likes these properties. And so we're dealing with a local institution that's putting money back into the community. And I think the other thing I'd like to point out is we have a very low leveraged loan. So essentially we're only borrowing about 65% of the total purchase price plus the CapEx. That means we're putting about 35% cash down on the property. It also means we're financing about 35% of the CapEx. And one of the things Brian and I always harp on is adequate capital reserves, don't over leverage, fix rate debt. I know Reed is of the same mind. So this is a low leverage conservative investment, only 65%. So I think that's a very positive factor in a time that's a little bit nervous. And if I can speak to that, so I've been in the real estate business 44 years and I've been through numerous cycles. And generally, I think we all understand the long-term trend is up. Housing rarely gets less expensive, rent rarely goes down, but from time to time there could be turbulence. And so the key as an investor is to use leverage properly, be properly capitalized so you can ride out a year or two of headwinds or some kind of difficulty because you know you'll come out and the economy and the market will pick up again. So we've structured this deal to offer some security to our investors in a somewhat turbulent time. Um, the long-term prospects for Greenville is still good. People are still moving here. Jobs are still moving here. And again, I'd like to reiterate the kind of rents we're talking about, twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars $1,400 for apartments in a good solid middle income neighborhood, that is affordable rent in the year 2022. So we're right in the sweet spot there. Um, you can review some rental comps. We know all of these properties. We've probably bid on two or three of them. So we've provided some rental comps. We've provided some sales comps. Uh, and again, we're kind of buying below the average price per door for the sales comp. So review those at your le leisure. Um, the other thing that many of our investors have really appreciated, 
when they've invested with us, uh, often we'll be out to dinner or lunch with them and they'll go, you know, Brian, I saved 6,000 on my taxes from investing with you. And we do provide good tax benefits and we do that through cost segregation. We've had a preliminary study on both of the properties, Bonita and Calabrea. And the upshot of it is we would expect in year one, your 2022 K-1, we'll provide you a tax loss equal to about 42 to 45 percent of your investment. So uh, the cost segregation, the depreciation, the tax write off these investments offer does exist. It's real. Of course, tax law is complicated and you'll have to talk with your CPA as how it actually impacts your situation. But I can tell you many of our investors have been quite happy with the tax benefits these investments have provided them. Um, a little bit about me, a little bit about Brian, a little bit about Reed. Um, and here's some of Reed's track record uh on larger multifamily assets that he's gone full cycle on um so we feel really good about him kind of heading the ship and then brian and i will kind of be the local people executing the game plan so i think it's a really good team as i've said before we like the asset um Next steps would be to complete a soft commit form. We hope to have the PPM ready sometime next week. We'll get it loaded up into our investor portals, at which point you can start signing PPMs. We'll provide wire instructions and you can start getting uh, your investments in. We hope to close this acquisition early to mid-September. So really, we'd like all funds in no later than the, the, the end of August. So we still have a month to do that, but uh, I would encourage everybody, if they're interested, to kind of move the paperwork along. And again, if you have questions, just reach out to us. Um, I think I've covered anything. I mean, Brian, any comments, Reed, uh, any comments, or should we just open it to questions and go from there? No, I think you did a great job. Yeah, well, thank absolutely. you, Ria. Yeah. Uh, so let me check the question box. Or um, so I'll open it up to questions. If you could just put them in the chat box, we'll try to answer them. Uh, we will be making a recording of this, and it can be distributed uh, to you. You just have to reach out and request. Uh, and hopefully, I'll figure out how to do that within the next 24 hours. Um, so let's see. Uh, so Jerry Sanchez, who's a good friend of mine and uh, uh, who also loves Greenville, and we met over the our love of Greenville, uh, and he's invested with us and helped raise capital on future deals, uh, asked about why the confidence about the local economy with BMW, the Inland Port, Greer, Clemson, and so forth. Um, I can just say we're here, we see what's going on. When you walk around downtown, you'll see two or three big cranes in the sky. Businesses are moving here all the time. Uh, it's a great place to live. The location on the I-85 corridor is excellent. Uh, we're still relatively affordable compared to most major metropolitan areas in the United States. And I would say our quality of life uh, matches most places in the United States. Uh, Laura, my, my life partner, had a great career in Silicon Valley at Intel, Intuit, and Visa. I had the good fortune of selling real estate in Menlo Park and Palo Alto for decades. And uh, we could have moved pretty much anywhere in the country except maybe the Hamptons or Martha's Vineyard. And somehow we had the good fortune to move to Greenville. Uh, so it's a great place. It's business friendly. Uh, auto manufacturing 
is strong. We have a, a inland port that distributes throughout the country that's connected to um, the port of Charleston. So all of this is going to continue. We also have an, a migration of a lot of people from Boston and New York who are looking for a nice quality of life, but a slower pace of life. And so we have uh, wealthy people from the Northeast moving into downtown particularly, which of course spurs all the service and hospitality jobs. Um, Greenville is a foodie city, uh, ranked the number one under the radar Southern food destination by Zagat. So there are a lot of factors going here. So I've raved about Greenville enough. Uh, Robert had a question about how do you execute CapEx with existing tenants in place? Um, typically the way Brian and I have handled it, and I believe Reed kind of does the same, is when a lease comes due, we approach the tenant and make them an offer. And essentially, we'll make them an offer to renew their lease at some increased rent. For the sake of argument, let's say $100. So if they're paying $900, we might go to them. If you'd like to renew for a year, your rent will be $1,000. <clears> um, most times the tenant's going to stay because they know $1,000 is still a pretty good deal and they don't have to have the hassle to move. So if they accept the offer, we increase the rent, no vacancy, no CapEx renovation expense. It's a win for us. It's a win for the tenant. If they choose to move, that's also a win for our team and our investors because now we can go in, renovate the units, and instead of getting a $100 increase, we can kind of get $250 increase. So uh, generally, we'll offer tenants the right to renew at a higher rate, assuming assuming they have been good paying tenants. If they're difficult tenants, we probably won't offer, offer the chance to renew. So that's how we kind of do it. We're respectful of the existing tenants. We try to move them towards market. And if they wanna move, that's great. It just gives us the opportunity to increase rent more. Um, Arn, if, yeah, if I ahead. could add to that. Yes, please if, do. If I could add to that, that <laughs> that's as far as the interiors go, but the exterior CapEx dollars, which the plan here is that, we, you know, part of the business plan is to do substantial improvements to the exterior. We start that right away. We don't need the tenants to, to vacate the properties to do that. So we can go in and improve the landscaping, you know, make any kind of repairs to roof siding. We can paint the exteriors, redo the welcome center. And that's actually really important. That's a that's a big draw right from the from the get. Like like Reed mentioned earlier, we want somebody to pull into the property and be excited and like, wow, this is nice. I want to live here. So we we start doing that from day one. Um, we start working on everything on the exteriors, and then the interiors get done organically. As Arn mentioned, hey, if the tenants, you know, when as tenants move out, you know, we go in and we renovate, and and it's and and that's just going to happen organically. We're not going to go in there and, and push tenants out so we can remodel. Hey, uh, Brian, th th thanks for that point. Uh, it's an excellent point. And um, at our uh, a complex we own uh, at the Townsend Summit, 1127 Rutherford Road in Greenville, probably two miles from this property. Um, we started on the exterior and um, redid gutters, downspouts. We also painted the brick uh, on the exterior. And we had tenants come up to Brian and Brian's crew and kind of say, thank you for making this place a better place to live. So uh, tenants are happy to pay an increased rent if they see the owner is investing money in the property. And as Reed said earlier, when the tenants drive on the property, we want it to look nice. We want to have it an attractive leasing center. We want to make it like it's a, you know, it's a place they want to live. There are customers, there are most important customers. And 
we found if you take care of them, they'll pay good rent and provide us good returns. So uh, exactly right. We'll start on the outside, work on the inside as needed. Uh, so thanks for that, Brian. Uh, Dan has a question about how much the general partners are investing of their own money in this deal. And I can tell you, the three of us are going to be investing well over a million dollars in the deal um, because we believe in it. We invest our own money along with our investors in every deal. So the general partners, Reed, Brian, and I will be investing at least $1 million of the $16 million we need to raise. So we will have skin in the game. Uh, and of course, our success is tied to your success. The investors always get paid first. And if we do a good job for the investors, then we're compensated for that. And that's as it should be. So I think that's about it. If anybody doesn't have any other questions, again, really appreciate your time. We're excited about this project and uh, reach out to us if you have any questions. Um, we've gotten good response for this property and uh, uh, look for the, the, the actual subscription documents next week and uh, happy to answer any questions. So thank you and uh, good night to all of you. Thank you for attending. Thanks guys. Yep, thank you.